Welcome or welcome back to Session Zero, where I discuss Dungeon World every Wednesday. Today I want to talk about fronts, what they are, what to think about when you're making your own, and how to integrate pre-made fronts into your existing campaigns. So what is a front? At its most basic, a front is a tool designed to organize threats to the characters and the people, places, and things they care about, including the horrible things that will come to pass if the characters don't interfere. You'll typically make fronts between sessions, and there are two types. The adventure front, which sees only a few sessions of play, and the campaign front, which covers the overarching narrative of the campaign. They behave exactly the same, but the campaign front burns more slowly across more sessions. A front is made up of several aspects. The description is a couple of general sentences which remind you what the front is about. The cast is the major players involved in the front. Name them, give them a short description, and make them unique. A few stakes questions remind you of the things you're playing to find out. These are clear, unambiguous questions about the people, either PCs or NPCs, and events of the front which you as the GM want answered. Sometimes a custom move is also included, which can give the front a specific mechanical trigger or effect. Finally, two to three dangers define the biggest threats that push the fronts forward. I save dangers for last because they have multiple parts themselves. A danger is a group of people or monsters and can even be physical elements of the world, such as a blasted landscape or cursed place. Each danger has a type listed on page 187, each of which has a list of GM moves which come with them. There are then several names within each type, Cult from the Ambitious Organization type, for example, or Demon Prince from the Planar Forces type. Each of these will come with a specific impulse that motivates that danger to fulfilling its impending doom, which I'll cover shortly. This is a guide to how that danger acts. The Cult wants to infest other organizations from within to achieve its goals. The Demon Prince wants to open the gates of hell. Think about the danger's impulse when you're writing its grim portents. Grim portents are bits of fiction which can come to fruition if a danger goes unchecked. They are grim outcomes which portend the fulfillment of the impending doom. Dangers in an adventure front will have two to three grim portents, the campaign front dangers will have a couple more. These don't represent what will happen, they represent what will happen if the player characters don't interfere. They're possible moves waiting to be made at the right time. Of course, the players are likely to interfere, at least some of the time, so between sessions you'll need to think about the consequences of that interference. Maybe it has completely neutralized the danger. Maybe it has only set it back, forcing a change in direction. Finally, each danger has an impending doom. The impending doom is the final toll of the danger's bell. As the grim portents come to pass, the impending doom grows in power and becomes a reality when the final portent fires. Tyranny, pestilence, destruction, etc. Page 193 has a full list of impending dooms. In my opinion, there are three important things to think about when making fronts in Dungeon World, and I'm going to save the most important of these for last. First, unless you're running a one-shot, which I've done and is a lot of fun, you're not going to make a front during your first session. Run a session zero first. Next, the grim portents of each danger are not what will happen. They will only happen if the characters don't interfere. As the characters interfere, these will change or often become no longer applicable, and that's fine. That's the way the system is designed. Finally, the second sentence of Chapter 15 tells us that fronts are threats to the characters specifically and to the people, places, and things they care about. That means you need to listen to your players, find out what their characters care about, and create your fronts to threaten those things with dangers and a cast of unique NPCs. This often means you're not going to start with a world-shaking campaign front. You may start with a vampire hunt because the cleric cares about the rumors of a growing vampire threat. You may start looking for a cure to a disease because the ranger cares about the disease which is affecting her brother. The creative part for you is deciding the who, why, or where. Why are the vampires a growing threat? Where did the disease originate? Use the answers to these questions to create your description and cast and to write your stakes questions. During play, maybe the cleric convinces the party to help him deal with the vampires and maybe the ranger convinces them to help her first instead. The characters then have a choice to make about what they'll tackle first, vampires or disease, and maybe a third option which attempts to do both at the same time. This is exactly where you want the characters fighting on two fronts, which is where the term front comes from. 
Whichever they choose to do first, the other is not being interfered with, and thus their grim portents are going to begin to fire off. When I start a new campaign, I don't make a campaign front right away. I start by making an adventure front with one danger for each character, and just see where they go first. I can always move dangers from an adventure front into a campaign front and vice versa, because the vampires or the disease, or something else entirely, may become a world shaking campaign event. You just don't plan that, you play to find out what happens. It may sound counterintuitive to use pre-generated adventure fronts since they are so closely concerned with the characters, but the important things remain unchanged. Don't use one during your first session, remember that the grim portents are not set in stone, and listen to what the characters care about. Find out what they care about and threaten that, either with a front of your own creation or a pre-made front which you can adjust to fit your characters in the existing campaign. That's my take on fronts. Let me know in the comments if I missed something or if you have any questions. If you enjoyed it, please like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Thanks for watching, and I hope you come back next week when I look at five things from a Marvel Champions campaign you can use in Dungeon World. Have a great day!